The next part of Lecture 12 concerns resonance. Resonance is described as sharing a bonding pair between more than two atoms. Here's an example. If students were asked to draw sulfur dioxide, one would go through the math and discover there are three bonds. So in a large class, a portion of the students might draw SO2 with the double bond on the left, and a portion may draw SO2 with a double bond on the right. These are what is known as equivalent resonance structures. Perhaps some of you can see that if the OR were a mirror plane, it would be just like one SO2 molecule looking across the mirror at the exact same SO2 molecule. So equivalent resonance structures are often drawn with a double-headed arrow between them. So each structure has one double bond, which has a bond order of two and is short compared to the single bond with a bond order of one. So when Kevin went to look at the infrared spectra of this particular molecule, they expected two different sulfur oxygen bands, one with a short double bond and another with a long double bond. Reality, when the sulfur oxygen bond lengths were measured, was that they found two bonds of medium length, the exact same length, and that length compared to other compounds was midway between a bond order of one and a bond order of two. So this led to the idea of resonance, that perhaps this double bond was not localized just between this sulfur and this oxygen, but rather spread out across the entire molecule. So these two electrons can wander. Their orbital probability region includes three atoms instead of two. So the bond order for this particular structure would be number of bonds divided by number of bonding regions. Bonding regions, you remember, are an area of electron density between two atoms. So if I look at SO2, there are one, two bonding regions, but yet there are three bonds in that region. So the bond order of a sulfur oxygen bond in SO2 is 1.5. There's a couple ways one can recognize equivalent resonance structures. One is by seeing the mirror plane where these are reflected, that it is simply a reflection of one Lewis structure and another. One could also look at the formal charges. Each structure has sulfur, with plus one formal charge, an oxygen atom with minus one formal charge, and another oxygen atom with zero formal charge. So if the individual formal charges on the atoms are the same, then one has equivalent resonance structures. So when a structure on paper has equivalent resonance structures, the appropriate thing to do is to average the bond order. Another way to recognize resonance structures is they are interconvertible by simple electron movement. This is your introduction to electron pushing arrows, which will be followed up when we get to chapter 12. Electron pushing arrows start at electrons. So if I wanted to convert this structure on the left with the double bond on the left to this structure on the right, here is how I would do this. First of all, I would take a lone pair on that oxygen and turn it into a bond. This would move this from a single bond to a double bond. So we are essentially making a bond. So the arrow is starting at the lone pair and ends between the atoms. Now, if we stop the structure where the bond was formed, there would be 10 electrons around the sulfur. So we can't stop this structure. We have to keep going. And we'll do this by breaking a bond. 
you notice that we need a single bond here. So we will take the double bond and turn it in to a lone pair. So essentially what's being done is this bond is being broken and two electrons are being placed on this oxygen. So I hope you notice that now the structure on the left is the structure on the right. Let us say I wanted to turn the structure on the right into the structure on the left. Well, first I would want to kick in this lone pair to make a double bond. Next, I would want to turn this double bond into a lone pair. I hope you notice that now we have in both structures the double bond on the left side and the single bond on the right side. Now please do not get the idea that this double bond flips back and forth like a windshield wiper. The Heisenberg uncertainty principle says we cannot know the position and velocity of an object simultaneously. The idea behind resonance is the two electrons in this bond are shared among the three atoms. All right, put a pin in that until we get to chapter 12. Here is another example of resonance. This time we're going to share the bonding pair between four atoms. So this is the nitrate ion. And in a large class, if I asked students to draw the structure, you'd go through the math and realize that you needed four bonds. Some of the students would draw this with the double bond up. Some students would draw this with the double bond to the lower left. And some students would draw this with the double bond to the lower right. So this one doesn't have a mirror plane of symmetry, but it does have a rotational axis. Perhaps one notices that if you take this structure and rotate it 120 degrees counterclockwise, it results in this structure. And if one takes the original structure and rotates it 120 degrees clockwise, this structure is given. So they're all the same structure. They just look different on paper. So these are equivalent resonance structures also by formal charge. Each structure has a nitrogen in the middle with plus one formal charge. Each structure has two oxygens with minus one, minus one, and minus one formal charge. And each structure has one oxygen with zero formal charge. So when you have equivalent resonance structures, which means one has an equal formal charge distribution, average the bond order. So what is our bond order? So there are one, two, three, four bonds and one, two, three bonding regions. So the bond order for the nitrate ion is 1.33. This is why if you look up different Lewis structures of the nitrate ion, you might come across this, which shows that the double bond is spread out and diluted between all the nitrogen-oxygen bonds, as is the charge. Or you might see an orbital diagram, which shows you that the probability region for the two electrons of that double bond is spread out among all four atoms. So why is knowledge of resonance important and how is it applied? Well, it definitely helps us understand the ozone layer about the Earth. Ozone is an atmospheric gas that protects life on Earth from exposure to the UV rays of the sun. If one were to draw ozone, there are two equally valid Lewis structures, much like SO2. So the ozone molecule is best represented with two identical bonds each one shorter than the single bond, but longer than the double bond. So it's the same idea that this double bond's probability region is spread among three atoms. Now why is that important? Both molecules have the ability to protect us from ultraviolet light here on the surface of the Earth. The O2 molecule has a very strong bond which when it comes into contact with ultraviolet light actually splits and makes 
ozone. But this isn't the only range of UV light that reaches the Earth. Ultraviolet light between 240 and 315 nanometers is also produced by the sun. So ozone protects us on the planet Earth by breaking apart when that range of UV light reaches the molecule and breaks apart to make oxygen atoms and O2. So without this bond order of 1.5 and the ability to absorb UV light in this wavelength range, we'd get a lot more sunburn and, unfortunately, DNA mutation.